and welcome back. So, if you caught my last couple of videos, I said that I've got something coming for Project Stepchild, another modification that is rather necessary. And <clears throat> I need to get on the car before the October event in Alabama because it is a safety issue. So without further ado, I'm gonna turn the camera around, show you what I got, and we'll talk about it for just a little bit before we get to the install. All right, so I got a little bit ahead of myself and started on the install. Um, just did a couple things to get started off camera here, but this is what I'm referring to. Yes, we're adding hood pins to Project Stepchild because, you know, with the fiberglass hood, um, you know, if it catches some air underneath, it could fly up, even with the stock hood. You know, you start reaching some fast speeds, it could fly up. But especially with fiberglass, I kind of don't trust it. Um, and it's a good idea. And a, I don't know if it's required at tracks, but for safety of yourself or anybody else, it's always a good idea to run hood pins. So that's what we're doing. I did get the quick latch hood pins and let's see, let me show you the box. So these are the ones I got, the QL38 LP BP, which is a low profile black. So that is what we're putting on Project Stepchild. Like I said, I did go ahead and drill some holes. Now these holes already existed. Let me get one out here. These holes actually already existed in the front support of the car. Uh, all I did was make them a little bit bigger. They are actually holes, push pin holes, for the radiator cover, if you can see it right over there. So they already existed, I just made them a little bigger and then drilled down through some of the plastic so that the hood pins would go all the way down. And I've also taken the liberty of marking the holes, not sure you can see it, but if you can see that little mark right there. And of course, I did it on the other side over here as well. So we are all set to go. Now we have to drill into the hood, which I'm kind of nervous about. I think what I'm going to do is start with a smaller bit and, you know, work my way up. I just want to use a smaller bit to go through because I have to go from the bottom through the top of the hood. So I'm gonna start with a smaller bit before I put anything bigger in there because I need to make sure that the hole saw that I used, that that bit, that the hole is not too big for it and it wobbles around on me. So anyway, let's get going on this. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of time today and I may not finish it today. It'll be the same video for you guys, maybe a different day for me when I finish up, but gotta get this done because I want to be safe when racing this car. So. Let's get busy, let's get these hood pins in, let's drill some holes into this nice hood, man. Let's do it. All right, so the instructions say to drill, now I did do the, let me back up, I did do the small holes first. Let me show you the top of the hood. And hopefully you can see there, there's the driver's side hole. And then over here, is the passenger side. I did use a small bit for that, just drilled all the way up through. And then now I have drilled the larger holes. As you can see there, the instructions call for a two and a half inch hole saw. The biggest I had was two and a quarter, so I just went with that. I think it just needs to be big enough that you can reach your fingers up in there and tighten up the, the knurled nut, whatever you want to call it onto the back side of the quick latch. So now the other side here, the top side, it calls for inch and a quarter and the smallest I have is inch and a half. So I'm kind of at a standstill right here. So I've got to go get a hole saw, unfortunately. So I've got to stop the install where I'm at. Uh, good news for you guys is it'll be the same video. So really, no delay for you guys, but it's delaying me a little bit um, as I install. But so anyway, I'm going to grab a new hole saw and I'll be back and show you what I'm going to do to try to prevent from 
messing up this paint. I don't want to mess up the paint at all. Um, it's a pretty decent paint job on it, so I don't really want to mess that up. Um, but I will show you that before I actually drill the holes, and that way we'll see how that works. My theory on preventing the paint from chipping or anything like that. So anyway, stay tuned. We'll get back to it here in just a little bit. All right, so I want to show you all this real quick. Uh, I did get the new hole saw. And I want to show you this side. I've already drilled the driver's side. So if you can see there, it's got the hole there. You do want to check many times and make sure that that is exactly where the pin is going to be. And on this side, I haven't drilled it yet, but I wanted to show you what I did to try to help prevent any of the paint from being messed up. So in order to prevent any paint damage, I put some tape there so that you know it won't spider chip or anything like that. And it worked really well on the driver's side. I'll show you that again. So nice clean hole there. So here we go. We're going to do the passenger side and uh, see how it turns out. All right, so I've got everything installed, but I did want to highlight a couple things here. Uh, just to give you an idea, let's see if I can get you around. If you can see in there, can't really see in there, but there's a little bit of space underneath this metal part that this pin goes through, but you can't really get a wrench in there. I don't know if I can get you on this side. This side wasn't too bad. Yeah, you can't really see. Sorry, I don't have a light. Um, it's inside but anyway you can get your finger in there but the plastic webbing is actually angled so it's kind of hard to get in there and getting the wrench in there is kind of difficult this side isn't too bad because you've got this room here now on this side it may be different for other air induction kits but there's not a lot of room in here so i basically had to wedge a wrench in there and it was tough to even get it back out because it was wedged in but got it in there and tightened these up. That's tight. And I put the actual latches in, as you can see that one there. And that one there. And then I'll show you what they look like on top of the hood. There's that one. And the other one is over here. So I'll close the hood so you can see them actually latched in. Um, but also wanted to mention, with the kit they do send this Turbo Fuse. It's a green colored uh, wicking thread locker. So that's what they say right there. Green wicking grade thread locker for pre-assembled parts. So what that's gonna do for you, cause like these on the hood and you know, it calls for a two and a half inch hole here. I only had a two and a quarter hole saw, so it made it a little bit difficult getting my fingers in there to actually turn the knurled nut because all you've got is a knurl on it and basically you can only get it finger tight. Um, you don't want it too tight anyway because then you might start, you know, creasing the hood or breaking the fiberglass or something like that. But so they give you this compound so you can use on all threaded parts. Um, I did use some of it down on the pins as well, but I mainly wanted to get these really good because I knew I couldn't get them super tight. And I can't really get any kind of pliers or anything up in there. That is totally my fault because I didn't have a two and a half inch hole saw, but I'll check them periodically just to make sure they stay tight. Um, just add that to the normal maintenance list of, you know, upkeep with this car now. So but anyway, that is what it looks like. I'll shut the hood and let you see what it looks like with everything closed up. Got the hood closed so you can see what that looks like. Um, unfortunately, they didn't have a gloss black option. So, you know, this is just going to have to do. And it's a little bit off from the rest of the black paint on the hood. But, you know, hey, that's okay. Um, is what it is. I wanted a, you know, smaller type hood pin, a less obvious one. Um, versus like the, I think, arrow catch, you know, those are pretty large. I didn't feel like cutting this hood up that much to get those in. So 
I do like these. I like the way they look, and they use them on the 2020 GT500, which I believe these are the same ones. I don't know if they use the uh, larger one or not, but yeah, it's not bad. I kind of like it. I think I've got everything lined up pretty good. It looks like it anyway. If it's off, it is what it is. <laughs> but yeah, I guess this will work. But all I need to do is hold the hood down. And if I do decide to change to more traditional type hood pin, you know, I've got some room to open up those holes. So left a little bit of options just in case I want to change it up. And because that's one of the reasons I didn't want the arrow catch, because once you put those holes in the hood, I mean, that's that's it. I mean, that's you <laughs> you've taken out quite a bit of the hood. So. But yeah, I mean, this is gonna do it for this. I mean, I like it, it's functional, it works, and uh, it'll do what we need to do. So that is gonna do it for this one. One step closer to being ready for the October race that we're supposed to go to in Alabama. Uh, yeah, we're getting there, and we should be ready, we should be good to go. But anyway, that's gonna do it for this one. Hope you liked this video, if you did, hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed, please do so, and we'll see you on the next one.